addiction. I'm only going to give you my interpretation of addiction. I would say addiction is anything that you tend to repeat. And if you hear a word taboo, which means forbidden, you might get hurt or killed or die if you enter a certain place. So that word may cause people to stay away from certain things. They could be addicted to stay away from certain things. Do you understand that? So if you find yourself, I don't know if you ever did, singing commercials, you know, chew what's more tobacco, it's good for you. If you hear it often enough, you will sing it. And you don't even know you're singing it. Music is also addictive. First of all, I wanted you to know that addiction could be anything. It could be addicted to smelling flowers. If you see flowers, you can't help but sniff. That could be an addiction if you do it often enough. If the association becomes often enough or frequently used, I would say the person automatically don't even know they're addicted, but they sniff. If they've been doing it often enough, there are men who smell flowers once a year, so they're not addicted to lean forward and smell it. Now, how do you change addiction? First way to change it is not to become that addicted to anything, meaning don't keep listening to music. If you do, you're going to be humming it, whether you like it or not. Or you'll be making any noise that's associated with pleasantry to you. How you break addiction again. Long-term addiction, where the body is automatically responding to it, or you feel you can't live without it, or you feel you can't live without a certain person. There are people that take their lives when their wife or best friend dies, because they can't live without them. That's becoming addicted to a person, if you can't live without a person. The more friends you have, the easier it is to live without a certain person. But if you live with one person all your life, you never go anywhere, and they have killed or missing or kidnapped, then you live in pain. But if you have many associations, many people that you know that, that you like, that are pleasant, you're less apt to become that addicted to any one person. So to avoid addiction, avoid super dependency. And also, if all your problems are solved, if you've got a mother that puts your shoes on in the morning and feeds you with a plate, with a spoon, until you're seven years old or 10 years old, you become addicted. You take a book and you read and you open your mouth when your mother brings the food over. You become addicted to that performance. And it's very difficult for you to break that if it occurred over a long period of time. So in order to break addiction, don't go getting involved in repetition too long a period of time. Now if a person is already addicted, you have to expose them to other things so that the other things become more important to them. And so the more things you expose them, the less probable your addiction also, uh, the less you're exposed to, you understand that? It's easier. But if it's long term, it's harder. Because the associate system is almost like uncontrollable urge to do something. So what I say about addiction is try to avoid repetition of words that have very little meaning and try to avoid repetition of unhealthy dependency. Do you know what that means? We smoke cigars and you're in an environment where everybody smokes cigars, it's very hard to break that habit. But when you first get there, you just say, I'm addicted. I, I become hurt physically, I cough. You have to give them a reason for walking out, otherwise they resent you walking out. Just say, I have an allergy against that. Instead of saying, hey, I don't like you guys smoking. That's an attack. That's received as an attack. So it depends on how you put it. Again, I'll repeat, in order to avoid addiction, stay away from long continued practice and exposure to any one system.